Right, so started out with 20 litres of tap water, treated it with a crushed quarter of a Campton tablet. I've now halved that water, so I've got 10 litres here. I've uh, dissolved one kilogram of extra light spray malt in here. The other 10 litres is in my saucepan where I'm about to put the other one kilogram of extra light spray malt along with some aromatic malt. Let's get over to that pan now. There we go. Okay, that is in there. Could start bringing that up to heat actually, so it's light the bastard. one kilo of extra light spray malt in there. Now we've got such a small amount of grains to steep in here, I'm just going to rest that sieve on the top. I'll put the grains in there. So that's 100 grams of aromatic malt. in a bit so we don't get any dry pockets. And I will leave that to steep whilst the temperature rises in here. Right, these have been steeping for around 15 minutes and the temperature is around 80 degrees C. So I am going to remove these steeping grains. Right. Let's see if I can rinse it through. Oops, without spilling too much sugary words all over the kitchen. I'm actually going to add the hops in early because I'm only going to do a 60 minute boil with the hops. Putting them in before it's boiling that's uh, 30 grams of pearly hops and that will allow them to gradually come up to temperature, kickstart that isomerization reaction of the alpha acids. So when it does just a 60 minute boil, that should be sufficient to get our bitterness out of these hops. So we'll just leave that to come to the boil. There's going to be no late hop additions, but for the last 10 minutes of the boil, I'm adding some protoblock. There we go. That should help us get a nice clear brew. Five hundred grams of light candy sugar.
So, we are down to just over 30 degrees C. And the other half of the wort, the unhopped wort in the brew bin, is at about 20 degrees C. So if I add the two together, we should have the right sort of temperature for this yeast using the uh, Mangrove Jacks Craft Series Belgian Ale Yeast N27. And for best results, ferment between 26 and 32 degrees C. So that's what we're hoping to attain. Let's see if I can't make an absolute bonk out of this. Mm, let's try to box clever here. Don't want that sieve to slip. So, I'm going to try to lock it in place. Let's try a little spoon lock to stop that from slipping. Definitely. Yeah, 26. Next step. A bit more aeration to the work before we add the yeast. People tend to aerate their works in different ways. Some people favour this approach of stirring it vigorously. Uh, some people, uh, if you've got a tap on your boiler, the uh, dripping of the, uh, the wort from a height into your fermenter is sufficient too. Some people like to use an aerating stone and pump air, or some people prefer to pump pure oxygen into their wort, which is obviously a very efficient way of doing it without introducing or without the same risk of introducing microbes. But you don't have to do it on a small scale like this, it's perfectly adequate to aerate by the vigorous stirring or even as you uh, drop it out of the boiler into the fermenter. Right, so it looks like specific gravity is either in the high 40s or just 50. I think it's 1.050. the yeast to do its thing. And I'll move this to a warmer place and leave that to ferment. Right. The blonde beer that I brewed I'm using as a base. Some of it I will have as is, some of it I'm going to make a cherry beer and some of it a raspberry beer. So it's been fermenting away here in the primary vessel. Let's check where we're up to. We've got a sanitised hydrometer, just 
wait for that to settle. One point not one two roughly. There's still a bit of froth on the top there that makes it more difficult to read. Obviously it'd be easier if I put it into a hydrometer jar, but I don't need it that precise. I just want a rough idea of where I'm up to. And I'm happy with that stage to siphon it off into secondary vessels for it to mature and carry on fermenting with the fruit. So, I thought I would give myself a real headache for cleaning my equipment later by using things with a really narrow neck. So, let's see. Fruit goes in well, nice and easy. Question is, will it come out quite so easy? No, I don't like the look of that. I'm going to discard that. So I'm using frozen raspberries per one gallon demijohn. I'm going to add two packs, and each pack is 350 grams of frozen raspberries. So we're going to have 700 grams of frozen raspberries per gallon. And I'm hoping. That will be enough, because raspberries do have quite a pronounced flavour, to give a decent raspberry flavour to our beer. Now, good God, isn't this tedious? One, two, three, maybe. We'll cut here until I've finished. Right, <clears throat> on to the second demijohn. Body, body, body. Put the recipe in the demijohn. Right, so that's two with raspberries in. Now, for the cherries. I searched high and low to find Morello cherries because I thought they would probably give the most fragrant cherry note. So the beer pass. Incidentally, I wiped down the worktop with Star Sand, so that one that I picked up should be fine. Now I'm reasonably confident that over there the raspberries should be absolutely sufficient in that quantity to impart a flavour because I believe the raspberries are quite strong for giving flavour to beer. What I'm not sure about is the cherries. Whether using the same amount, I'm pretty sure the same amount, 350 grams, so two packs each per demijohn is going to be again 700 grams per gallon. Will that be enough? I think it should be. It might be a bit over the top to stick it all in one. There won't be room for any bloody beer. These are a damn sight easier to get in to the demijohn than the raspberries. The raspberries very quickly broke down into little bits, even though some of them are still quite frozen. Again, some of these are quite frozen, some are softening, but they're still much easier to drop in. Now these have been frozen after they've been destalked and pitted, so there's no stones going into here, which could be a good or a bad thing. Um, Perhaps the stones would give another element of complexity, giving that uh, slightly almondy note. 
Whoa, let's not get carried away. Right, that should be going in to the next demi John. Oh. Right, so that is that. Now, one thing that does concern me is these are thawing, but they're still bloody cold. Is will it be fine just siphoning beer straight onto it, or will we shock the yeast a bit? Um, I think uh, this is probably a good time for me for, to uh, break for lunch. I'm going to cover those up, uh, keep them nice and uh, sanitised. Allow that to uh, come a little more to room temperature. Have a spot of lunch and then siphon the beer onto the fruit. That really has only just filled the four demijohns. So there's not enough to have just the blonde bit on its own without the fruit. Which is a pity because as I was siphoning it I got a mouthful and it tasted beautiful. But let's hope it will taste even better with these fruit additions. So I'm going to uh, bung on some uh, bubble traps and leave that to finish off its uh, last bit of fermentation. Leave it to mature and macerate with those fruits and hopefully we'll have a damn good fruit beer. Uh-oh.